so when everybody says, play the kids, play the kids, and a section of fans are like, ah, no, don't, don't do it. Don't damage these guys. Don't damage them. Well, I think you can see now that the ball movement, the energy, the positioning, the hunger, the skill level of certain players that we have up front is far way more than what we've been accustomed to. It's that hunger. When you see players running, Saka's kind of dropped off a little. One might say that he's dropped off to the level of the people around him. The inconsistencies from Sabayas and El Nene is continuing to happen in the midfield, but the midfield is a structural problem. I think when party comes back, that will fix itself. But in terms of creativity, what we've seen from Willock, what we've seen from Niketia, what we've seen from Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe was on yesterday and he just made a difference as soon as he came on the pitch. The way he just ran the channels. And again, the most of these players can run at defenders. Martinelli. Martinelli, before the goal, had another cross that he put in, whipped in pinpoint precision. And that's the reason why the second time he did that cross, he found Lacazette. It makes you wonder, the other day when we would had 36 crosses, what was happening with those crosses? You were just putting the ball in for putting the ball in sake. And Martinelli showed straight away with the class that he has that you can deliver a ball to a point. Kieran Tenney has done the same thing. But all we're talking about is young players. All we're talking about, we're, there isn't anything that we're talking about positive from any of the older players. Nothing. There's not one positive thing that we can say about the older players. And even Reese Nelson, he came back from injury over a week ago. And he's not even been in the squad. He's not even been on the bench. In any of the games that we've played last two or three games, where's Reese Nelson? I mean, after I've seen Willian, and Pepe's had his chance now, one can say it's fair Pepe's had three games. Now's the time to put in Reese Nelson. But Reese Nelson last night wasn't even an option. These decisions again, guys. These is a, we know the players are letting the coaches down. That let's park that for a second. We know this the reasons why this team is failing. But as I've said before, the decisions that Arteta is making are impactful. And they are impactful to our result. It's detrimental to the performance, guys. That we could be getting more with what we're working with. What we're working with is not a lot. And as I said, the only way to reprimand the veterans is to drop them. But by not dropping them, you're inviting mediocrity into the team. I mean, Ruinson last night was, was awful. And I've been saying for a while that this guy isn't going to make it. Every time we've been doing live match commentary in the Europa games, I've been saying this guy, he ain't going to make it. And my, forget the Martinez decision. That was just stupid, boneheaded. You couldn't buy a goalkeeper of his quality for 20 million. You couldn't buy a goalkeeper of his quality for 40 million. Yeah? That's how bad it is in the market. You couldn't buy a goalkeeper of Martinez quality for double the amount of money you sold him for. But you're, you've ended up with this guy. If Bert Leno gets injured, we are screwed well and truly screwed macy said already he's leaving next summer now you know why macy's better than this kid he's three times better than this kid you've seen macy play at all levels yeah and fair dues he hasn't had the chance but how are you gonna buy a kid from nowhere from a no man's league and stick him in as your number two when you've got a guy you've been grooming since he was 10 years old <laughs> And Mustafi, oh my God. So here's the logic. Here's the logic. You have a scoring problem with Emery when you dropped Ozil. So you brought Ozil back into the team and all of a sudden Arsenal started scoring goals again. Mikel Arteta comes in the team. Ozil's not playing. He decides to play Ozil and all of a sudden the team is starting to score. And Ozil's creating more chances. 
and then you drop Ozil. Mustafi is a guy who's also leaving and you're playing him over a guy like Saliba. Where's the logic? Not, not even Saliba. Let's leave Saliba out of it because he's not even on the roster so he can't play. Pablo Mari came back from injury a month ago. How is Pablo Mari not playing and Mustafi, who continually makes these mistakes? I mean, Gabriel was dreadful. He was at fault for two goals, but I'm not even going to talk about Gabriel because Gabriel's 22. And remember when I said about Saka, when you've got somebody at that high ability, all of a sudden they look around and they see the players not trying, not running, not making any effort. And you start to play down to your teammates level. So maybe that's what's happening with Gabriel. Because Gabriel, last two games, he's been nowhere. And Gabriel is the master of clearances. If you cross a ball into the box, you can bet your bottom dollar that Gabriel's going to get his head on it. And last night, balls were coming in left, right, and certain that Gabriel was nowhere to be seen. No clearances, just out of position, um, over-penetrating, finding himself out of position way too far up the field. But, but anyway, I digress. Mustafi, as I call him, this serial offender, time and time again, just at fault for not tracking players. And he's been doing it since the day he walked in here. If you're watching footage and you're a manager as smart as Arteta and you don't know that, and you're putting him ahead of Pablo Mari, that is insane. So Pablo Mari should be playing. Reese Nelson should be playing. Smith Rowe should have had more minutes. But let's move on to the injuries. The Thomas Party issue. Why did you even play when you were told that there was a 20% chance that the injury could reoccur? David Luiz, why did you not take him off the field after he suffered the concussion and a head injury? Martinelli. Martinelli came on last night, got hurt, pulled his shirt over his head. Everybody was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. You came in at half time and then you let him go out in the second half because he probably told you he was okay. That's not his decision to make. You're the manager. The decisions that have been made at the top level is impacting our performance as well as a, everything's capitulating in itself. Players aren't good enough. Players aren't trying. Managers making the wrong, wrong decisions. Managers choosing the wrong players on the field. The tactics are wrong. Everything is impacting to cause these results. Everything. And we're, we're sitting down here and we're thinking, what's going wrong? Everything's going wrong. Absolutely everything's going wrong. And, and people are starting to check out now. I'm getting messages from fans saying I'm not I'm not watching the games anymore, Apollo. We said, look, Apollo, look, you know, let me know what's going on. I'll watch your video, but I'm not watching the game. And sorry, last night I I couldn't do it. I I couldn't sit in that chair for two hours because I've I've got a slight injury at the moment, so I I couldn't do the game for it. So I apologise for that yesterday. But um, we didn't miss nothing. We probably saved ourselves from embarrassment. And anyone who thinks we're going to beat Chelsea, you're kidding yourself. But the one thing I do know is that these, these young players, they need to be a part of the team. They need to be a part of the squad. And some of you guys are just thinking it's because they're young and, and it's replayed. No, they're actually better than some of the guys that we've got there. And it's not so much better. It's the effort. They're showing more effort, more aptitude, you know, more desire and the will to, to want to succeed. For a young player to succeed at Arsenal, that is a dream come true. For an older player coming in here, getting a big high salary, what is it? It's not, it's not that much, is it? It's nothing. But for an 18, 19, 20 year old to get on the field for Arsenal and wear the badge, that's a big deal. And every time we see these young players play, Willock, Niketia, Nelson, Smith Rowe, Martinelli, Saka, yeah, Balogun. Every time we see these kids, it's like, it's like they're willing to run themselves into the ground for the team. And that's what we want to see. That's what the fans want to see. 
And last night, again, is just, just another embarrassment. But they're not going to sack him. They're not going to sack him. I don't think they're going to sack him until the end of January. And I'll tell you why. And it's because after the Chelsea game, we have got winnable games against Brighton, West Brom, Crystal Palace, Newcastle. There is a stretch of games that the board are probably looking at it saying, all right, look, guys, this is a way we can actually fix what's, ha what's happening. So I'm going to get back to you as soon as we cover the Chelsea game and we'll talk about this in greater detail. Speak to you guys later, man. Peace out.